show you how to play the introduction to a really great Faruka by the master Sabikas. You're going to need to already know how to play arpeggios and a few forms of rascaio. This is an intermediate thing we're doing. The whole piece is way more advanced, but this is actually pretty doable if you have a few techniques under your belt. We'll also learn what Faruka is and how he's arriving at the chords in this great intro. So if you don't know what Faruka is, check out my Faruka tutorial where I go through some of the essential elements. But what's happening in this song is we're in the key of A minor, and it's going to start on E7 chord and A minor. E7 again, A minor, D minor, back to A minor, E7, and we're back. And we can get the main compas, they call it, of this by just going one and two and three, four, one. So you heard me do that at the beginning, but before we even get to that, he's got a great arpeggio intro that I'm gonna show you how to play. Before we get started playing all that stuff in the left hand, let's just look at the arpeggio pattern itself, just the right hand. And by the way, I've got a capo on the second fret. The actual recording of this song, he does have a capo on the second fret. It kind of makes it a little bit more manageable when we get up here, but I have a cutaway that makes it a little bit easier for me. You might not have that, so don't have to have a capo on. But here is the arpeggio that we're gonna be dealing with for most of the intro here. We're gonna go like this. I think it's a good idea to start out with just what's happening in the right hand first, if it's difficult for you, and then we can plug in those chords a little bit later. But we're playing the thumb and the ring finger at the same time. Notice I'm doing a thumb rest stroke and a ring finger free stroke at the same time. You can do a, a thumb free stroke if, if it's easier for you. And then I'm going backwards here, and by backwards I mean the reverse arpeggio motion, which is A, M, I, A, M, I. So we have the thumb and the ring, then the middle and the index, and now do the thumb, index, middle, ring towards the floor now, the opposite direction. Right? And then when you get to this last note, just kind of repeat that AMI pattern twice. So it's all triplets in 4-4 four, four time. We would say one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. That's the pattern. Okay, let's look at some of these chords. Earlier I mentioned we have an A minor chord. We could play A minor this way, which you also saw at the beginning. And we can also do it like this. Kind of a weird shape. You might not have seen that before, but you do actually know this if you know how to play D minor. Just take that all the way up to where your ring finger is on an A note. Of course I have the capo on. So it would be here if you didn't have a capo. Um, and that is an A minor chord. And you also can go like this, same exact chord. That's also true of D minor, by the way. Take this F and just drop it down here. Same triad, same chord. But we're up here, and the pinky is up on the 12th fret, or for me it's the 14th. Remember when you have the capo on, and we're reading the tablature, we consider the numbers to be what they always were. So we pretend that this is zero, even though it looks like it's two. Um, that confuses people sometimes, but it's a lot easier that way, believe me. So we're going like this. our A minor chord. Now we're going to take this pinky, leave the pinky on the string, bring it down here, and we're playing this diminished shape. Now this is filling in the function of E7 here. So we do a lot of that stuff in flamenco. Okay, so there's our E7, same arpeggio. Then we drop it down here. Now here he's breaking the pattern up and going the entire time going ring, middle, index on every single beat of the measure, kind of like a romanza, um, which is in 3-4 time. One, two, Right, we're going one, two, three, four. Now we didn't even use that note, so you could have that finger off, but I like to just leave it down because we already had it. It just takes a less mental space to just leave it there like you had it. So back to this. Now here we're gonna bar this A minor chord. You don't have to play it this way and you shouldn't play it this way because we need our pinky up here on this note, coming up in a second, to play it like this, which means we're just not gonna play this string at all. Now he's back to the normal arpeggio, right? Drop it down here to G. Kind of did the same thing. Your middle finger's playing now, where that wasn't the case here. And we're still playing this melody note on top, an A note. Now we go, this is kind of a tough one, C7. You might see that like this. It's really an A7 chord up here. But we're using this fingering, unfortunately, so we can get this high note. Now we're back to what we just did on G, only now we're down here on F. Now before we get to the next part, he kind of mixes things up a little bit here. This is the Andalusian cadence, only he did an interesting thing on the way there. He went A minor, G, F, E is what we're expecting. But on the way to F, he played the five of F, which is C7. Now it's what we would call a secondary dominant and it just pushes us to F. So an interesting thing. This is old school flamenco, but we're still using some cool music theory concepts in there. A minor, G7, 
to C7. G7, in fact, wants to go to C. So it pushes our ear in that direction, and C7 pushes our ear to F. So that's pretty cool, I think. And then we're over here on E. But all we really need is this G sharp note, because we're gonna play around with some bass notes here. And he's gonna go from playing eighth note triplets, like we've been doing, to 16th notes in this measure. He's gonna go one triplet, two triplet, three E and a four E and a. So it's the same motion, it's thumb, ring, middle, index, only now instead of having the thumb and the ring finger at the same time, they're all split up into individual strokes. So um, a great arpeggio exercise, great thing for the right hand. fast there and you can kind of fluctuate the tempo get a little bit faster as we go so that next measure he continues with the 16th note groove here whole time leave make sure that your index finger is down there on that G sharp so we have F E F again open D come down here to B I would leave that down we have a nice E7 chord that you might be familiar with then G sharp and then on a minor chord we're going to do this and that's called an arrastre, where we drag or brush or sweep our ring finger up towards the ceiling. It's like we're doing a bunch of rest strokes in a row. Landing on the sixth string, we don't want to hear the sixth string um, because we want to land on the root of the chord. That's what he wants. Right. That's also 16th notes. Hey, if some of the Spanish guitar stuff is new to you, download my nylon string quick start guide where I show you the three most essential techniques for the right hand. Now he goes into what we call the compas, it's like the main rhythm, and it's what I talked about earlier when we're doing this. Faruka kind of has to have this somewhere in it, well, typically at the beginning. E7 to A minor, it's a very common groove for Faruka. But what's interesting here is Sabikas doesn't do E7 this way, he plays it in a different way, in a way that you may never have seen before. It's a pretty cool way to play E7. So you might be familiar with B7. I hope you're familiar with B7. We can play it with these three fingers. Kind of like a C7, if you know that one, which B7 is based on, right? And bring it all the way up here. Another way to play E7, because this is now an E note rather than B over there. And um, we're going to take this finger off. The E and the B strings can be open because it's an E chord, and those are both in the chord. But stretch way down here for this G sharp. And he's going to pull off to the open E string. That's pretty cool. Uh, I had never seen that way of playing E7 before until I checked out the song. Although, if you know your arpeggios, just the C form of an E7 chord. So what happens here in this first measure, he's not gonna play on the one, he's gonna tap on the one. You don't have to tap, but uh, I think it's a good um, kind of place marker. One and two and three, and pull off into the fourth beat like that. One and two, and it doesn't matter really what direction you go in. He's doing a lot of downstrokes, I think, because the, everything's very accented and loud. One and two and three, the strokes don't matter, and then pull off into the four. And then we have one more stroke up with the index. One and two and three, four and, and you can leave your ring finger down as an anchor and play A minor just as we thought was gonna happen, right? It's the same as the normal chords for Faruka, he's just playing them up here. Now that was pretty much the same thing, tapping on the one, one and two and three, this thing putting an F in there, Great little stretch exercise, feels kind of weird, but that's really uh, what, something we hear all the time in Faruka on that open chord, that F. Actually, a little bit easier to do it here because this kind of smooshing your finger down can sometimes feel weird. That time he didn't play on the and of four. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep the groove going or don't violate the measure, don't put too much time in it or take time away. It doesn't really matter as long as you're playing in four, four time, right? One, two, and three. Again, there he mixes it up a little bit. Okay, now we have a D minor chord, which we would totally expect in the typical chord progression rhythm of this song. Only now we're gonna play it here, but take your pinky off. Now that's kind of a jazzy D minor seven chord to be exact, but he's only taking the pinky off so that he can get some of these scale notes that are coming right up. So now we need to know the five stroke raw scale. That's when we do this, pinky down, ring finger down, middle finger down, index down and then up with the index, all evenly placed in the space of one beat, going one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do three of these in a row, so you gotta go. Now, it's pretty tough to get that totally even, but a great exercise and something that you totally should strive to do. He's doing it this way, you don't have to do this at all. You could go like this. One and two and three and four and. We're gonna be moving the pinky around here, seventh fret, eighth fret, and back again. Um, but he goes like this. 
back to the A minor chord, down up. So there was another five stroke in there. Like I said, if you're not good at those yet, you could do any rascal you want or no rascal at all, it's still gonna sound good. To close out this whole introduction, he goes back to the E7 chord, which if you're familiar with Faruka, you would have expected. And he's playing this chord again, only now we're gonna play a pinky list rascal and go ring, middle, index, up which is pretty much what we did with a five stroke, but just without the pinky. So now instead of having quintuplets, which is pretty weird, we have four 16th notes per beat. We're going one and two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And my thumb is on the sixth string as we often should have it. So we don't really have to have this finger down, but we hear it at the beginning and then just cover it up if you want. Take it off if you're not used to that stretch and go two E and a, three E and a, four. And then finally we have an A minor chord. Here we're just going, hit it once with whatever finger you want, and go triple it down. That's going ring, middle, index, down with your thumb. Your thumb is perfectly placed to do that final stroke. So I'll play that again for you, but first let me play you the common, more basic chord progression for Faruka. That would go like this. have some little ending like that um, but here it's mainly just chords and rascal so here's here on E7 going and again D minor by Sabikas is so great. It really gets advanced later. He does tremolo and alsapu and all kinds of stuff, really fast picado. But I think this one is pretty manageable for intermediate players. And this works as a great intro for anything you play in the key of A minor. So like I mentioned, Faruka is a really great one to start with if you're just getting into flamenco. And another one that's great because it's in 4-4 time is tangos. Check out my tutorial on that flamenco form.